The magnifying glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, no look. Be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Shh. I have to solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane. But I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique, so if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called datiloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Shusaka, sniff. Pick up the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka, <laughs> go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is, a splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there! You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tadish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Ah! Simka, no look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tom?
I'm Thomas uh, the Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, no, like, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. <laughs> Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. <laughs> Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! Whoa! <laughs> to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three. Baby, how did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. 
so, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan. Run! <laughs> the ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Hands on deck! There's a giant octopus starboard! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah. Did it break? No, it's all tidish. It's not close to tidish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lake! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh. That's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lake! You gotta get out! You'll get sick from that stinky air! I can't get loose. I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. Achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik! I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik! Where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. <laughs> uh. Nolik! Uh. Oh, no. 
is he okay? No, Lick. No, Lick. <laughs> oh, you're alive. Turning starboard. Turning port. Piesters. Piesters. Oh, whatever. He's gonna be fine. No, Lick. Do you know who I am? A giant octopus? The pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you going to do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat. There's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable. Except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is this the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, 
I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The zipper. Hey, Nolik, look. Why did Tom Thomas go to sleep like that? Maybe it was some kind of homework for one of his classes. Uh-huh. Gym class homework. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. You're looking good. My parents just bought it for me. Isn't it a cool jacket? And what? You slept in it all night? Yeah, once I tried it on, I didn't want to take it off, and I fell asleep in it. Yeah. Life's never boring with you around. Oh, I think the zipper got stuck. And so what? You can leave your coat on no problem. You're about to go to school, right? And you think I could sit in my class like this? How could I have broken the zipper? Don't worry. You haven't broken it. Not yet. Here is a simple zipper. It is made with two rows of small teeth that pass through a slider. The slider has two holes on the top and only one hole on the bottom. When we pull the slider up along the zipper, the teeth grab onto each other and the two rows join together into one. And zip! The zipper is closed. To open it, all you need to do is pull the slider in the opposite direction. Then the teeth will come apart. But on mine, they're stuck together. And now what? What do people do in the morning? Do what they do. Exercise. And I'll have time to think it over. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and, and then what about me? Uh, go exercise, too. One, two, three, and four. And one, one two, two, three, three four. four. One, one, two, two three, three, four. And one, four. two, one. three, four. Four. Simka, come on, think of something. I'm sweating already. Soon, okay? Go get washed up in the meantime. Whew. Do you think I could help you think? I think not. I think you'd be better off washing. How's it going, Tom Thomas? Did she think of anything yet? What? Did she think of anything yet? Ah, gotcha. Nope, she hasn't thought of anything so far. It's so hot. Just pretend you're a polar scientist. They always work in their parkas. And you know what? I'll be the penguin. Hey, where are you going? Uh, I can't take it anymore. All right, just sit right here, and I'll try to find the problem. <laughs> you see? That polar scientist game's funny, huh? <laughs> That's not it, it's Simco. <laughs> She's tickling so hard. Stop squirming. And you stop tickling me. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's why it won't open all the way. It's only a piece of thread stuck in there. Pull the slider up. <laughs> Tiddish! You can unzip it now. <gasps> Thanks so much. Here it is, a thread. That's what the whole problem was. You're kidding. So I've been sweating because of some piece of nothing? In technology, every little thing matters. I remember when scientists built one of the first computers around 60 years ago. It was a giant machine. It filled up several rooms and had more than a million parts. It was a technological wonder. But all of a sudden, this technological wonder went kaboom and broke, and no one understood why. The computer just stopped working, and that was that. 
The scientists were going crazy. They couldn't find the problem. Turns out that this huge computer broke because a little butterfly had flown inside the computer and got stuck in between some contacts. Yes, it's true. This huge machine went crazy because of a little butterfly. And that's how it goes. So you see, every little thing really does matter. Tom Thomas, breakfast is ready. What are you doing in your jacket? It's cause I was playing polar scientist. Hmm. Simka, what took you so long to figure it out? I just, just thought it would be funny to see Tom Thomas do his exercises and brush his teeth in his coat, that's all. That was your plan? Well, yeah. Can I joke around a bit? <laughs> the string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no. What are we going to do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia, Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So? Let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh, I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papus, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light up, up the, the tree. tree! Huh! Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree! Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho! Whew! That was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tideesh! Up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, 
our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! On Christmas ah, Eve. Nice box. The lights were brighter. Mwah! Every year no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. On Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock it seems, on Christmas Eve, is ticking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive. The electric train. Woo 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 woo! Zoom! Zoom! And suddenly, the Earth was attacked by an alien spaceship. Pew pew pew! If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved! Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> You don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago, but back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine, so you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! Nolik! Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the brake. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. 
But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer. When suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! The Magic Wand. Oh, Tom Thomas. How did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas? Your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden wish, Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden wish, Tadish! Hmm. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! Ah! 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 Oh! Ah! Hey, Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly! Ah! Ah! Shame on you for attacking helpless little kids! Wait, I'll make you bigger now. Golden wish, Tadish! Ah. What? You scared? So you're only brave enough to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge! I'm as huge as Tom Thomas! I'm huge! Oh! No, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Ugh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. 
And then I had to make you big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. <laughs> Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the hairdryer. Nolik, are you here? Yep, I'm here. I got a cool trick to show you. What? Oh. That was real magic, dude. Took long to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, uh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use a hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great, simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa. Yeah. I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. Probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hairdryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hairdryer and lifting you up to Nolik. So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. <laughs> 
can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hair dryer. Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. Like a fixie. Really? Uh-huh. Huh. Watch me. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Just look. I'll breathe in one breath of helium. Isn't it bad for you? You can only breathe a little. Hey, hi there. Oh, Tom Thomas became a fixie. And that's my trick for you. Funny, huh? Oh, that's too funny. What a squeaky little voice you got there. <laughs> See, I'm already not a fixie. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> That's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs> the flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik, but what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now, let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the mac uh, uh, um, the pack mat and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. <laughs> A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. 
And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop tucking! Grab hold of my hand! Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! Hooray! The music box. When the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes gonna come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. Music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. 
A short tooth makes a higher sound and a long one lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Yay! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do it. Tom. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Yeah! Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Uh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time and a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space, and the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate, 
and that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go. The papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. The magnet. Well, it looks like we need a pack of that. Hmm, where did this screw come from? another look in the kitchen. But we already looked in there. We'll look better this time. Let's go take a look in there. We looked so many times already. Simka, Nolik, what do you keep searching for in here? It's not a what, it's a who. Our papoose is missing. We've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, no. He's probably already turned into a screw. Because huh? he doesn't have enough energy. Maybe I could help. Surely. Let's start with you picking us up. We're just exhausted from running. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. 
That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. So, where should we look first? What are you looking for in here, Tom Thomas? Well, um... And what do you have there in your hand? Well, uh, just some screws of mine. Ah, I just found a screw not too long ago. Maybe it's one of yours. Probably. Where is it now? Here, take it, and don't leave them lying around. Should I turn myself around now so your papus can turn back into himself? He's been lying in there for a week already. He doesn't have the energy to turn back into himself. Then what's next? We have to screw him into some device, you know, so he will get his energy back. Okay. But which one's Papus? All of these screws in here look like Papus. We'll use a magnet! How come? All of the screws will just get lifted up together. First of all, not every... Not every kind of metal is attracted by a magnet. It's an easy thing to see for yourself. Just get a magnet. You probably have one in your house on the refrigerator. Try moving it close to different metal objects you have around the house like a spoon or nails or coins. You'll notice that some of the metal objects are pulled very strongly by the magnet, while some of the metals are pulled a bit less. And then there will be some metal things that aren't attracted to the magnet at all. Got it. And the second thing? Well, the second thing. We fixies aren't attracted to that magnet one bit when we turn into screws. Let's give it a try. Here, I found him. And now we'll screw him in. I wonder, are there any other fixies in here? We're not enough for you or something? Not at all, I just wonder. Nothing. Oh, and the screw went away. How about that? He already got charged up and unscrewed himself. Why don't you take a little rest? After such a big adventure. No thanks, I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time already. Whipped cream. <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait! From milk and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? 
Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Shake it harder, Tom Thomas! That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome! Bring it down! A little more! Perfect! Open it up! Chusaka, Chusaka! Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Oh. I'm so tired. I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical, extraordinary thing. <laughs> It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right. Katya's bringing a cake, and she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm going to pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? Mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom, Thomas, you're a genius. But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <clears throat> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. 
Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papus said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think he'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? The short circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, Don't touch. touch! Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they're turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. 
And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <gasps> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Electricity got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off uh, everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. <laughs> Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out, or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up! Hooray! Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait! I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. The fan. Pass him on the left. Step on it. Now pass him on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean, too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nola. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? 
Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat. Eat them. Ha ha! And how come you never told me anything about big eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared! <laughs> <laughs> All right, scaredy cat. Let's keep going. like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. That part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom Thomas! Turn it on! Tideesh! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah. The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotazoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Ah, uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea? 
idea where the robot's going. I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Uh, what was that? Uh, look, you know... <gasps> he destroyed him! Nola, stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. Robotazoid R300, I can't believe it! <sighs> well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly! Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Yay! The spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our Fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. 
Ever since he was a boy, Papu's dreamed of going into space. And why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the astronaut training center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papu's trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late. And the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off. But he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tadish! Tom Thomas! Tadish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry! Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masia and Papus come home from their boo 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 booze 
business. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh, not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is... It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. <laughs> the vacuum. What's the point of cleaning up toys? You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it! If you're done cleaning up, go and eat.
eat your lunch. Okay, be there soon. Nolik, you wait for me? Uh-huh. He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. possible a vacuum cleaner can take all that dust in oh, and none of it gets back out. Oh, come on. It's simple. They taught us about it way back in third grade of Fixie School. <laughs> you can think of a vacuum cleaner as nothing more than a fan with a net. The fan spins backwards, so it sucks in air with dust and dirt. If you put a net in front of the fan, the net will catch everything that is in the air and let the air pass through. Then all you need to do is add a pipe and you've got yourself a vacuum cleaner. But instead of a net, vacuum cleaners use special bags to collect the dust and dirt. It's as simple as that. Oh, whoa, Simka. Uh, no, like, could he get sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no. Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? Uh, uh, Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I, I mean, for you. All right, I'll go clean the dishes. No lick, no lick. small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it, he, he, ha, chew. If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now. Ha, 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 chew. At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier, and their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. Nolik! Nolik! So what do you say, Tom Thomas? <laughs> what? I already apologized. <laughs> And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> the compass. Pipe ball, hands on the deck. Aye, aye, mateys. Shiver me timber. 
Bears. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We are not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? With a map. And it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy, monster on the horizon. Let him do it himself. He, <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly, I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. 
Delirium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks so they can swim freely and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack mat Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth! They must be so hungry! You're right! They're hungry! Nolik, come on! <laughs> Those fish, they're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. Whoop. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. 
Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Oh, 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 oh. The cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tom Thomas, aren't you done yet? Yeah, show us your surprise and quit drawing. But this is the surprise. So, make yourselves comfortable. Quiet on the set and action. <laughs> You should put a huge bump on his head. It's just like a cartoon that you drew him there. <laughs> he did draw us a real cartoon there. Oh, right. Real cartoons, they only show them on television. But they make them exactly the same way. <laughs> Animation is made with many, many pictures called frames. Each one of the frames is a little bit different from the one that comes right before it. For example, a character can lift his arm up a little bit at a time. And then, if you watch the frames very quickly, one right after the other, it looks like the character is really moving. And that's how cartoons are made. And you know what? To make one minute of a cartoon, you might have to draw more than a thousand frames. Oh, wow. I'm not patient enough for that. It's no big deal that your cartoon is short. Especially since it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. Tom Thomas, who is this kooky guy you drew here? You're just joking, Nolik. You don't recognize yourself? So this is supposed to be me on here? Did you already forget what happened to you this morning? Simka, you're it. You can't catch me. <sighs> I'm too fast for you. Ugh. Oh, ay 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 ay. You weren't too fast for the pole. Ah, oh, Simka, you didn't have to tell him about that. Real sisters don't treat their brothers like that. Oof. And your cartoon's not funny at all. No, Lick, don't go. It's okay, he just needs to sulk for a while. While he's gone, there's something I want to show you. Do you have a cartoon you can put on the TV? I have plenty. What should I do? Let's watch it again. But now I want to show you the same cartoon a frame at a time. Here, take a look. This is a frame. And here's another and another. Isn't that cool? Uh-huh. So cool. And then back at regular speed, there's 25 frames every second. What should I do? It's magical. Simply, you know... I feel awful for Nolik. Yeah, I feel awful too. There are many different ways of making animation. Hand-drawn animation is, of course, drawn by hand. And stop motion is made like this. The animators pose the model and take a picture of it. Then they move the model a little bit and take another picture. And they do it again and again and again until there are enough frames to make the characters look like they're moving very smoothly across the screen. Another popular style of animation is clay animation. In these films, everything is built and rebuilt out of modeling clay. But today, most of the cartoons are made on a computer. At first, they make a computer model of a character, a sort of digital puppet. After the models are built, they are colored and animated to move. This is the kind of animation that's used in the Fixie cartoons. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Are you drawing a new cartoon? Nah, I started fixing the old one, so Nolik will stop being angry. Good, keep drawing, and I'll go and get him. No, Lick! I'm not here! No, Lick, forgive me. Please don't be so mad. There's a cartoon to watch. I've already seen your stupid cartoon. So what'd you do now? Put a huge bump on my head? Not a chance. I did it all over again. I'm sure you'll love it. You sure of that? All right, go ahead. Show me your cartoon. Quiet on the set and action. There you 
Draco. Now that cartoon I really liked. Good, because I'm all out of paper. Well, I think the first cartoon was funnier. <laughs> Whoa, but this one's much better, of course. Yeah. Mm -mm. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, not, here we come. come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas, you didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No! Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone, give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack-a-mat here. A pack-a-mat? What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Tom Thomas, what did you drop in here that is so sticky? It's probably the soda I was drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. Down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're gonna be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message, and write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? 
We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> the solar battery. Let's see, three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise. We can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's gonna have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Simka, no, look. Just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, oh, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? <laughs> It'll take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tish! With the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. 
What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there on the calculator. <laughs>